right so we'll just go ahead and create this trigger let's go to the setup so in this uh, example what we are going to do is we are going to do one more thing we are actually going to create a method in a class and then call that method on the trigger okay so so far trigger example what we have done we have seen that we directly go to the object and write the trigger in this case we are not going to do that so it's going to be set up uh, develop fx classes new fx class okay so we write it like public class So the same old theory of writing class, public class, okay? Written the class. In this uh, one, I will definitely define a double. Call it total amount. So this is a variable which will hold the total amount, some total of all the amounts uh, which are getting added. Fine. So this is there. And then um, I will define a method. So the class is there this is going to be a void method that I am defining void method because it will not return anything okay it will just perform the action for the trigger give it any name whatever you want and define a parameter here list of opportunities why this parameter because this is going to be my trigger.new so I will assign this OPS value to the trigger.new so that that's what I'm trying to uh, gonna do, right? So whenever you are defining a method for a trigger, you should define a list as object parameter so that that can be used for trigger dot new or trigger dot old, and rest of the things will be defined within this method itself. Okay. <clears throat> so here there are two for loops, uh, you know, uh, that we are going to use. First for loop is for all the records which are already there in the database, which have already been created. So opportunity O1 equals, uh, sorry, not equals, within select amount. from opportunity where created date equals today and created by ID equals user info dot get ID okay so opportunity O1 is uh, you know uh, I'm running this loop for all the records which have which have been created today created date equals today and created by is the current user so if Anju is the current user it will go and check all those records which have been created today by Anju okay and then it should uh, add that amount to the total amount so you can write it uh, total amount equals total amount plus one dot amount so every time this loop runs the value keeps on adding to the total amount okay so total amount keeps on increasing and initially total amount should be zero so when the process starts at that time it's zero <coughs> when the loop runs it uh, keeps on increasing the value so it does a sum of all the existing records fine so this loop is okay to do a sum of all the existing records and put them into total amount so this is one loop now come to the second loop second loop is going to be question? yeah yeah please go ahead so this total amount uh, uh, that's what's confusing me because uh, for the first op for one when I run it uh, so we're telling the system hey look look for this, this makes sense but the, there would be no total amount right at that point because zero it will be zero opportunity first the total amount would be zero right hmm so, so do we need to 
specify this here like can't we say so I mean the second one I would I'm thinking it would be like when I look at one opportunity I would say the first opportunity I've created for the data amount is um, um, hundred dollars then it adding up starts happening when I create a second uh, uh, second opportunity. You know what I'm saying? That's how I'm thinking, but I'm not sure if I'm correct. I'm sorry, I'm not able to uh, get what exactly you're trying to say. So you're saying um, if there is only one opportunity, then it should not uh, do this adding up and stuff, right? That yeah. Uh, so I mean, we can do that uh, in case you want that sort of uh, situation. We can only always go and check if there is an opportunity existing. But putting in the loop, what is happening if there is one record? It will only add one. If there are ten, it will add ten, right? So when you put something in loop, that works for a single record also. That is what we discussed yesterday for trigger also. That always put the trigger in loop so that it takes care of one record or multiple records. Got that? Okay. So this is. I mean, I can definitely go and first of all do a check whether there is an existing opportunity or not. If there is an existing opportunity, then only it should happen. But uh, you know that is something. Which will be again extra lines of code uh, which we do not want, right? So this will work very very well for a single record also. If there is only one record, then it will just add, you know, run this loop once. It will not run uh, it, you know, more than once. So it will just uh, run it no, once and then sense. come to the second loop. Yeah, got it. Thank it. you. Okay. Now the second loop is going to be on the trigger dot new uh, thing, right? So trigger dot new, as I told you, is going to be this. So this is the trigger. You know, remember the code that we used to write within the trigger. The same thing we have to write here. But here I will not write opportunity um, O2. Ideally, you know, if you are writing it in a trigger, what will you write? You will write it like this: trigger dot new, right? This should have been the code in the trigger. But because this is a class and it does not know what is trigger dot new, I will. Use this parameter here, OPS. Got it? Which I have defined for trigger dot new. That's it. Now whatever code logic we have written inside that trigger, that should come here. Now here it should do a total amount e sorry. Amount equals total amount plus uh, o2 dot amount and then it should check if total amount gets greater than 1 million then o2 dot, dot add error This then O2 dot add error. You have seen your daily limit, right? That is it. So this part of the code, the second uh, for loop, is exactly what we write inside the trigger. So, but before this, you know, before I start, uh, you know, uh, doing a check on the current records, I always need to go and check the existing record. So that is the reason why that method. Okay. So this for loop will first of all go and, and you could have easily written this entire code in your uh, trigger itself, right? So there is no problem at all with that. But we have written it in a class and uh, with the help of a method just for your understanding how we can actually call a method on the trigger. So that's there. Uh, I think we are done with this code. So there is a first loop which checks all the existing records which have been created today by the current user. Second record checks the records which are being entered now on the trigger. And that's it. And I think at least one mistake I should be having here. This is one extra. Now let me try and save this. Uh, user info dot get. Um, 
Just give me one second. I'll just get the correct syntax for this. What was the correct syntax for it? Get info. Nine twenty three. One more is required. In for loop, in second for loop, there is a uh, total amount spelling mistake. So, I'm on line number nine. Uh, in, in second for loop, yeah. Now let's talk about line number nine. Uh, okay, so we define it inside. Mm -hmm. That's correct, no? Amount, amount. Total amount is equal to total amount. That's correct, right? No? No, the second one. Total amount is equal to total. It's T O A L plus zero one dot amount in line nine right 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 Created by ID. Okay. Just give me one second, huh? just correct it.
okay that's fine now oh, errors so that total spelling was incorrect corrected and this was user info dot get user id so this also corrected okay so my class is defined and in that class i have a method objects method okay and that method requires a parameter to be defined so this parameter will be the trigger dot new thing okay now all you need to do is just take the name of the class and name of the method so what is the name of the class op trigger right and name of the method is op check dot op check and this method requires a parameter which will be trigger dot new right so that's it the value for this OPS is going to be trigger dot new that's it so you just have to go and define this one line code inside the trigger rest everything is going to be same so go to customize uh, opportunities triggers define a new trigger give the name of the trigger op trigger 3 it can work before insert and before update so because I've written the entire code there I don't have to do anything I just have to define the path method name uh, sorry class name dot method name and within that the parameter that is it save it method is not very well okay So class name. that's fine so you don't have to write the entire code here in this case what I've done is I've written the code there method is there whatever I want to do the code block that was also written there I've just called the class dot method name here now this trigger should work absolutely fine so it will check all the existing records and then it will check the records which are being entered now okay and if there is an error it will throw you there is it okay please let me know if anyone has a question understanding the code simple right okay so uh, that is it so I just go back and you know practice on the triggers thing so this uh, 